Alright, you saw a little bit of what was coming, so let me elaborate on the details of the run. I can only do damage with gravity spells, no spirit summoning, all the spells in the category have to be collected. Since these spells are also quite powerful, I'm gonna focus my attention on the less used variants of these spells, like Meteorite of Astel and Collapsing Stars. I'm gonna try to avoid abusing Rock Sling, or as a viewer described the spell to me, the three rocks. Honestly, that single spell is good enough to carry you through the entirety of the game. Oh yeah, and I will do a lot more main bosses than usual, so buckle up. Now, without further ado, let's pull ourselves right into this. For once, the initial setup for this run is really simple. No need to break the laws of causality to get our first spell. We simply grab our boy Torrent, get to the trap chest in the lake, and get transported into the Celia Crystal Tunnels. From here we just take a stroll through the Ionian Swamp, and there we find both the Three Rocks and the Meteorite Staff, which gives a 30% damage boost to all gravity spells. Which is a lot, by the way. On our way to grab those things, we grab a couple of runes so we can just barely get enough levels to use the spell, and would you look at that, we are done. Margaret, my boy, I'm so sorry I had to do this to you. I mean, nothing too surprising here. We deal 288 damage if all the three rocks connect with our boy over here. That's way too much power for one man to have at the beginning of the game. No wonder so many people flock to these spells. Personally, I have never tried gravity spells ever, so I'm interested to see what they will be able to do by late game. But before all of that, we gotta delete this nuisance in front of us. Now, we actually do need a little bit of a better setup for Godric, as otherwise we will be missing some damage to fully defeat him. So we hop on over to Lyernia and head towards the Academy of Raya Lucaria. Inside of the Academy we want to collect our second spell of the run. It's locked behind a mini boss fight just beside what appears to be a giant water wheel. It's one of the lesser alabaster lords which hold the spell. It's a pretty simple fight overall. The three dogs are just too powerful yet again. And once he falls we get the spell Gravity Well. Unlike three rocks, this spell can be charged, so it will have some nice synergy later on in the run. Here we also collected the Graven School Talisman just before the Red Bull for its 4% damage boost to all sorceries. The final thing we grab before facing Godric is in the northern part of Lyernia, just beneath the minor Earth Tree. We need to defeat the Earth Tree Avatar first, but again, the three rocks, you get it by this point. After stoning the three down, we grab the Magic Shroud and Crack Tier, which boosts all magic damage by 20% for a full 3 minutes. Now, even though the rock type spells do mostly physical damage, the gravity well type spells deal significant magic damage, so having this buff available is gonna be really nice for later on. Time for Godric. And well, haha, <laughs> this was not a boss fight at all, this was a slaughter. I find it funny that one of the best spells in the game is just three giant rocks hurling towards the enemy. I guess physical damage spells are a pretty good concept in execution it seems. I fired a couple of shots of gravity well also, but you can see the giant discrepancy of that spell compared to the rocks. There is just no competition here. Well, after stoning Godric for a hot minute, he finally bites the dust, giving us our first great room. Now we have a couple of choices on how to proceed from here on out, but almost always it's best if we widen our arsenal of spell choices. So let's go ahead and do that. We proceed by going into Caria Manor. In this castle we face Royal Knight Loretta, as she blocks our further progress. Nothing too complicated about this fight, aside from the fact that her mobility does interfere with my ability to hit her with the three rocks. But other than that, we just stone her repeatedly and end the fight in suicidal fashion. Beautifully fought. After that fiasco, we go and find the Ever Jail outside of her arena. In the jail, we find yet another Alabaster Lord, and here we can finally see the main usefulness of the spell Gravity Well. It's really good against skinnier, faster moving enemies, as the three rocks just won't be able to hit them at all. It doesn't deal a ton of damage yet, but later on we will get a better version of this spell, which will do a ton more damage once we set it up properly. But for now, we'll have to make do. The Alabaster Lords are quite predictable, and even though my playing abilities were subpar that day, I managed to strike him down on my first attempt. Now, he gives us a really fun spell. Meteorite. Now we have even more rocks to play with, infinite if you'd like. With our newfound power, it's time we make our way to the Altus Plateau. This time I chose going to the Abductor Virgins in Volcano Manor, by first getting transported inside of the Academy over to the Manor. Here we collect the plus 5 Somber Smithing Stone and the plus 6 Somber Smithing Stones for later, and make our way to the dynamic Virgin Duo. I employed a very simple strategy for them. Rock down the Axe Slinging Mopo first with the 3 rocks, while avoiding the second one. Once he is down, we jump up on the side of these rocks in the arena, and proceed to happily spam our way to victory by using Gravity Well and sure enough, the virgins go down. Once we arrive on Altus, we want to collect the key upgrades for our build. The first one is behind our most favorite boss, Gilika the Invincible. Here we can finally start playing around with the Meteorite spell. Unfortunately, we do not have the capabilities to utilize it to its full potential yet, but the potential is definitely there. For now though, we strike with the three rocks and gravity well, and Gilika goes down. Behind her rests the Ritual Sword Talisman, 
which boosts all damage dealt by 10%. The other key item is located back in Limgrave inside the High Road Cave. This cave is quite interesting and a bit confusing to navigate, but eventually we find the end. Obliterate the Guardian Golden holding our treasure and collect the Blue Dancer's Charm. This one is a bit unique. It boosts all physical damage dealt depending on how low your equip load is. This is why during most of the run you will see me entirely naked, as this will buff my physical rocks damage by quite a lot. It's time for us to get ourselves the second great room. Renala is going to be my boss of choice here, as she will suffer greatly under the weight of my rocks. So we go ahead and face the Red Bull first as always. And heh, well, I think the damage speaks for itself. Renala though is a bit of a different story. For her first phase we do thankfully have a good solution in Gravity Well. Its low cost and relatively fast cast speed make it great to clear out her annoying students. Come to think of it, why can't I also have the gravity spell books that the students cast? Great idea to put into a mod. Anyways, once Renala is on the ground we just pfeffer her with rocks until we get to the second phase. In the second phase we just have a Wild West style mage standoff, with me throwing rocks at her and her throwing bullshit at me. This goes on for a while until we perfectly execute another suicidal victory and grab our second great room. Before we skedaddle to the capital, we need a few more things before we can utilize the meteorite spell to its full potential. First we kill this dude and then that dude so we get access to the market shackle, as that will allow us to play some dirty little tricks on our boy. Next we hop onto the Divine Tower of Lingrave to activate Godric's great room, as a plus 5 buff to all stats is just too good to pass up. Finally, we go and scale Mount Gelmir. Here we move to the decrepit earth tree on top to challenge the ulcerated tree spirit, guarding this place. Simplest and fastest way to go about him is to just take the high ground and hurl the three rocks over and over into his quote unquote face. After he's down, he drops us the most important item for our build, the hidden cerulean tier. This bad boy negates all FP usage for 10 seconds. Time to have some fun. And what better place to showcase the power of that than on the draconic tree center? Hidden Cerulean tier, sneak up behind his ass and let's go. Meteorite! Mm. Is he getting pushed back to him? Am I going crazy here? Uh, well, that's the Dakonic 3 Sentinel, I guess. You know how physicists always say that gravity is the weakest force? Yeah, that logic doesn't apply in the lands between. Thankfully, our golden boy Godfrey here is gonna put up a bit more of a struggle. Believe it or not, but fighting him with spells is harder than doing a melee build against him. That's just what I feel. The best course of action here, as always, is to keep our distance a lot and shoot the three rocks, or even better for this fight, gravity well, as it's just that bit faster as to make dodging his attacks a bit more manageable. Unfortunately, destroying him with just meteorite is not possible, but I do manage to get a cheeky meteorite kill at the end just for the memes. God, I love this spell. Next up is our boy Morgoth. We're gonna jump into that fight in a second, but it's time we actually grab ourselves a real staff first. On our way to get it we stop by the Everjail beside the Grand Lift of Dectus, here we face Godefroy. We start off with some meteorite shenanigans, but I got a bit too greedy here, though we still did some decent damage to him. He is a one shot monster though at this point, so do not by any means let him hit you. He is really annoying from close range, but thankfully once you get sufficient distance between you and him, he is quite easy to manage. Upon his defeat he awards us with Godfrey's icon, which boosts the damage of all charged spells by 15%. Very good for things like gravity well. We go back to Kaelid, to the town of Celia to be specific, and use an interesting torrent skip to get into the Nox duo boss fight. I explained this skip in more detail in my previous video. Once inside the arena, we activate our meteorite and just go to town. Once they are defeated, we go and grab behind them Lusat's staff, which is going to be our main staff for the duration of the run. We jump back to our good fellow EG and upgrade this bad boy to plus 6. And with this, we should be finally ready to face Mort. Give that to Puppy. It's not going to be enough. It's gonna to have to be shackled here and then immediately go into this. Okay, that was, uh, that was good enough. And GG, Morgoth. Three rocks, boys! <laughs> Demigod felt indeed. No, seriously, there is a ton of scripted boss potential with this spell. I didn't iron out these strategies perfectly, but they still do a ton of work. Now that we got the rolled medallion, we have access to the mountaintops, hence the endgame. But we do have one more boss to take care of at the beginning. The so-called Master of Gravity himself. I think we're safe here, right? We should be safe. I 
I mean, this is decent. I won't complain about this. I know these strategies might look very simple, but you do need to have solid timing and positioning as well as a good understanding of boss mechanics in order to be able to pull them off. That being said, shooting rocks from space at enemies and watching their health bars disappear has got to be the single most satisfying thing to do in these games. With Radan down, we go to the catacombs hidden in the boss arena and collect the upgrade to Gravity Bell, which goes by the name of Collapsing Stars. A very cool name for a spell indeed. We also hop into the Albanuric village in Lyurnia and grab one part of the Halectri medallion for later. And with that, we are finally locked and loaded for the endgame. We make our way to the mountaintops. On our way through that place we collect the plus 7 somber smithing stone and the plus 8 somber smithing stones, which are conveniently placed on our path. Immediately upon our arrival on the mountaintops, we scurry over to Castle Soul. Because I really do not like fighting the boss in this place, we hop behind the castle and then jump into the abyss. And after a while, Elden Ring is easy, guys. Now we go up the castle and collect the other half of the Deathless Medallion. We want immediate access to the consecrated snow fields, as in that place we will be able to get the final spell that will be used in this run. It's also the most powerful one at that. Another nice side effect of going here first is that we get to challenge Anastasia to a fight, and upon her defeat, she will drop us the Ancient Somber Smithing Stone, allowing us to get our staff fully upgraded at this point, which is really wonderful. Let's go get the final spell now. We jump into the yellow annex tunnel. Here, once you make your way to the boss, you will encounter the more edgier version of Astel, aptly named Stars of Darkness. The strategy for him is simple. Throw Roxling until he gets staggered, and then immediately drink the Physic and unleash Hell upon him. Let's see how that goes. Have some meteorites, boys, there we go. And then we meteorite him here. Let's see if this is gonna work. Almost! <laughs> Good enough for me, honestly. Not bad at all. Could be a bit better with better positioning, but oh well. Now we finally receive our upgrade to Meteorite. Meteorite of Astel. And what better boss to properly showcase the power of this spell than the Fire Giant. With his giant body, he makes for an ideal target to absorb all of the damage dealt by the Meteorite spell. For the first phase of the fight, no nuanced strategy is really necessary. Either the three rocks or collapsing stars should be just fine for tackling him. Just try to stay under his crotch at all times and you should be okay. The second phase though goes a bit different. And here we go! Fucking fire giant obliterated! <laughs> What else is to say here than meteorites go brrr? That is the only thing appropriate to say in this situation. Moving on. Forskin Duo is next. Unfortunately, I really wasn't able to find a cool way of dealing with them. Since they are a double boss fight, there is just no way to manage both of them and get an uninterrupted meteorite shot on them. So I mostly resorted to using Collapsing Stars. That actually really did wonders as the damage output on that spell is surprisingly high. Other than that, use the pillars, try to separate them, and the general strategy when fighting any boss, never give up. Before we go ahead and take on Malekith, let's go to a boss first that I've been dying to fight since the beginning of this run, the Dragon Lord Placidus Axe. Now the reason why I wanted to fight him specifically for this run is because he seems like a very good sponge to soak up all of the damage from Meteorite of Astel. Most people that destroyed him using that spell have used summons to distract him long enough to start the spell and stagger him in the process. So now I have to come up with a way to do it solo, which is easier said than done. There is no way we will get it off in the beginning of the fight, as he pretty much has the ability to shove that lighting up my ass if you stay still for even a second. So the three rocks are gonna need to help out here. The strategy went as follows. We hit him with the three rocks in the beginning to build up stagger damage on him. Once we accomplish that, we need to quickly drink the flask and find a big enough opening to blast him with more. Easy enough in theory, but how does it work in practice? Let's pray to god this works! GG! I didn't quite finish him off, but it's close enough. GG plus two sucks! Good fight. Remember that, people. If there is a will, there is a way. Martin Luther King. Time for Malekith. Unfortunately, again, there is no ultimate clever strategy that I know of to easily defeat this guy. But I'll try my darn best. 
His first phase is extremely easy, as the only thing that you really need to do is run away like you're a descendant from the Joe Star family and fire either the three rocks or collapsing stars at his face like there is no tomorrow. A key detail here is to drink the Physic just before the transition into the second phase. That way you will have just enough time to dish out some decent damage at the beginning with Moa. Sadly, I'm not sure that we can really finish him off with just that in the second phase, as he is probably just going to Donkey Kong you if you do that. We can still do some serious damage to him at least. Anyways, we easily managed to just finish the fight from that point on with some good old collapsing stars. With the Rune of Death in our possession, it's time to blast through the rest of the bosses. Yeah, this is much better. Well, if you don't think I can become an Elder Lord, then my boy Gideon... Oh, he goes away, actually. He just completely avoided Meteor at the Bastille. What an absolute giga chat. Well, this is funny enough. Bye bye, Gideon. With that nuisance taken care of, it's time to show you guys the true power of collapsing stars on our boy Godfrey here. Once we get into the fight, we cast Terra Magica, and then we start to spray and pray, pretty much. He starts so far away from us that we have ample time to deal a ton of damage to him before he even gets a chance to respond. The reason why Collapsing Stars works wonderfully on him is that it does a ton of damage, but more importantly, it homes in on him. So him moving around a ton doesn't really bother us at all. Also, a full connect with the spell does over 2000 damage, which is just absurd if you ask me. No man should have this much power. Phase 2 isn't much different. We try to keep our distance while waiting for an opening to fire a charged Collapsing Star shot at him. And after a while, we easily manage to no-hit the first Elm Lord. Four more bosses remaining to take care of. In order. Mo, Loretta, Malenia and the Rather Beast. What? I didn't equip my god then. Okay. Uh, guys, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought Comet Azur was funny against him, but this is even stupider. <laughs> With this much power in hand, I really wanted to try to dish it out on Malenia as well. Since we already have access to the snowfields, we can easily get to her. That is if you don't count this godforsaken bullshit Everjail puzzle that Miyazaki put into the game. Anyways, once we finally get over that, in our way stands the guardian of the Hell Tree, and her name is Loretta the Annoying. Do remember to drink the right flask. Wait, what? The hell is that? How did you cheat, Loretta? Loretta cheated, guys. But it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter that she's cheating. <laughs> she was cheating, but I'm cheating harder. <laughs> it's finally time for my worst nightmare of this game. The boss I truly despise. The Rot Goddess Malenia, the Blade of fucking Mikola. The destroyer of my ass. The main goal here was to try to humiliate her in the second phase with Meteorite of Astel. But to do that we first needed to survive the first phase, which is easier said than done. I mostly resorted to abusing Collapsing Stars, as it is the only viable spell for this fight, considering how fast and unforgiving she is. We thankfully do have enough health to survive the Waterfall Dance, so we are good in that department at least. At the start of the second phase we bust out our plan. Unfortunately, her skinny body just makes most of the Meteorite shots completely miss making this strategy heavily luck based which just sucks honestly. Would have been really nice if we could finish her off, but oh well. During the rest of the fight I just resort to plan B, collapsing stars, and after a hot while of dodging for my life, we managed to take her out. God I hate this fight. One last boss remaining, the final boss. The Radagon fight is quite similar in strategy as the Malenia fight. Keep your eyes peeled, keep your distance and spam the ever loving shit out of collapsing stars. Though hitting Radagon is much more of a difficulty than hitting Malenia, Radagon is much more aggressive, plus he has abilities like popping in and out of reality and parrying spells, so fighting him as a spellcaster is never going to be fun. But I did defeat the entire game with everything being Radagon, so if anybody knows how to fight him, it's probably me. Collapsing Stars also helped by doing quite solid damage to him as well. Elden Beast, here we go. We of course start off with Moa. Sadly the positioning here required is quite tight, so I don't manage to get a clean hit. If you wanna do this right, you need to get completely behind his Elden ass. After all of the meteorite shots hit, he should get staggered, and you will have a completely scripted Elden Beast fight, which is just Pog. With the power of the three rocks, collapsing stars, and meteorite of Astel, we slowly chip down the Elden Beast's health and grind him into the dirt where he belongs. As icing on the cake, 
after we manage to stagger him, we blast his stupid ass with the power of a thousand stars and finally beat Elden Ring with only gravity sorceries. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this stupid video and I'll see you in the next one.